So welcome everybody. It's uh, Tuesday. It means it's uh, 10 Essentials with with me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, so far we've worked on uh, seven of the essentials. My gosh, we're just plowing away here. Uh, we've worked, we worked on the first four essentials that have to do with the body and the spirit. So, so who can name uh, uh, the four essentials that have to do with the body? Hi, Allison. Hi, is Esther. Okay. Well, number one is to. I'm sorry. Number one is empty, lively, pushing up, and energetic. Okay, and what does that mean, Marion? Um, it means to be, um, connected and, um, connected. What do you mean by connected? What are you trying to connect? To, to connect your mind, um, to your body, connect your upper body to your lower body, to connect your energy flow, to relax your, um, relax your lower back, to raise your head show your spirit. I may be mixing some of these other ones together. <laughs> okay. All right. So who can name another uh, of the four essentials that have to do with the body and spirit? Round your back and sink, sink your chest. Okay. And so how do you go about doing that, Miss Carol Ann? How do you oh. know you're doing that? Um, how do I know that? Because I can feel, I can feel my body. It's, it's proprioceptive. Your, your back and your shoulders are connected and you're hugging the tree. Okay. All right. So it's more about body shape, right? The body shape. If you've got the right body shape, then you're going to have the slightly sinking chest and right. the rounded back, right? Okay. All right. Very good. Okay, uh, anyone else who'd like to name another essential that has to do with the um, body and spirit? Sink the shoulders and drop the elbows. Okay, uh, and how do you make sure you're doing that? Um, well, making sure you're doing it, making sure you're doing that is you're just trying to keep things connected between the shoulder and the elbow. And if your elbows are down, it helps keep them connected. Okay. Okay. Anything also, else? You feel, less, you feel less tension when your shoulders are down and your elbows are down. Okay. So That's good. Your so, so what word do we use instead of tension? Because we don't want tension. Relax. Relax. We want to be relaxed. relaxed. That's right. Springy. Mm -hmm. Springy, we want to be springy. Uh, well, we want to make sure that, yes, we do want to be springy. We want to make sure that um, our upper body is relaxed. Uh, we also want to want to make sure what's happening. That our... We lower our chin. is settled. <laughs> Yes, so we want to make sure that we keep our chi down. So how do we know when we're keeping our chi down? We're breathing easily belly breathing. Our abdomen. Oh, the belly breathing, belly breathing. Okay. Doesn't look so attractive, you know, especially, uh, let's see. Uh, well, the only real young person here is Cheryl. Well, okay, we're all real young people. Okay, but I'm, I'm going to say, excuse me. me. I'm, say, I'm just no, saying, right. yeah, you know. <laughs> I hold myself in that category, by the way. Um, you know, is to see your stomach going in and out, right? That's so attractive. Okay. Yeah. All right. What's the last essential that has to do with our body and our spirit? Well. <laughs> That's a very deep subject. The waist. Relax the waist. Relax the okay, waist. relaxing the waist. All right. How do you know you are relaxing your waist? Or what happens 
when you relax your waist? You can move your upper torso easily. Okay. I'm sorry, Ms. Shelley? Flexible. Flexibility, okay. All right, anything else? You're grounded towards the earth and your head is lifted and your waist is open and, okay. and able to move. Okay, all right. So, so how do you know you're using your waist and not your hips? Your hips don't move and your <laughs> body does. Okay, all right, okay, good. Anybody have any questions on these four? Okay, that's a no. All right, now we are, uh, we've been addressing things that have to do with our mind and our energy. So what are the, the uh, uh, two, uh, two essentials that we've been working on so far that have to do with our mind and our energy? We first talked about separating empty and full. Right. Yeah. So, so, I'm sorry, John. And synchronicity, and synchronicity, empty and full, and synchronicity. Yes. Okay. So, um, so when we talk about separating empty and full, how do you know when you're doing your tai chi if you're doing so? Because, well, you are balanced. Balanced, okay. You're not off center in your gravity, or you're you're not a, you don't feel like you could be easily tipped over one way or the other. There's not an extreme pressure, say for instance, on your toes versus you know lifting off your heel. Um, you know the yin and the yang thing about one is receiving and one is delivering. Okay. Um, well. I guess I don't know that much about it, but I was going to say it's about, you know, that feeling between the two, but I would say that's a pretty new feeling for me. Nancy, is it being able to lift your foot off the floor without shifting so you're not double weighted, watching for not being double weighted? Yes, that's one way. Absolutely. On a physical um, uh, uh, basis, this is one of the things that we look for. How agile are you with your lower body? So are you committing to the step? Are you, you know, if you're on ice, are you already committing to that step? Um, then we know that your empty and full is not clear, right? And uh, when your empty and full is not clear, especially if you're on ice, um, when you put too much in the forward position, then um, uh, we know then that you can easily maybe fall into the, into the cold icy water, right? Well, what about the, the the closing your arms and delivering uh, or closing, you know, delivering everything all at that same moment, the arms closed at the moment that your foot steps? If, I mean, for the observer, if you don't do that, it looks like you're not synchronized. But would it also make you feel as if you're not synchronized? If you, I mean, would you really notice as a practitioner yourself doing it? That's the next it depends on, on what you're your le depends on what it is that you're looking for you know what I mean so for instance how many of you before you took this class knew that you were keeping your head lifted oh, well, I knew because you told me a thousand yeah. times right I knew, <laughs> but I didn't probably always do it but yeah I knew to do that you're, yeah. you're welcome Shelly yeah <laughs> Okay, my next question to Shelly is this. When when we've been in class together and I've been, you know, talking about, you know, keeping your head up, keeping your head up, did I specifically say this is the first essential? Yeah, probably. Over okay. and over. Okay. Okay. All right. So so you know, uh it depends on where you're at in your prog in your own personal progression of learning Tai Chi, on what it is that you're focusing on. You know, initially, uh, when people start learning Tai Chi, uh, uh, we really try to focus on our footwork, right? But then we get lost with our footwork because now we're trying to figure out what to do with the upper body. 
and when we get the upper body then the feet are not right you know so it just really kind of depends on where you are in your progression um, and so um, hopefully uh, those of you that are in this class now are at a point where you can start you know taking your your Tai Chi to the next level uh, where you can start thinking about you know these uh, 10 essentials and start uh, you know working on one <coughs> and then when you feel comfortable knowing that you're doing the one that you picked then you go and and and, and do another one so you would individually do 10 of them and then try to incorporate two together okay and once you can integrate two together uh, then work on three you know what I mean to the point where you can then start having all ten activated uh, during your your form practice this takes this can take a while depending upon <laughs> you the practitioner right it's, it takes as long as it takes for you to you know uh, adopt these into your body and into your mind you know first your mind's got to get it and then your mind has got to you know then yes, you know kind of make your your body then try to conform to it and um, you know it this is this is a, a very uh, it can be a very challenging feat uh, not F-E-E-T, but F-E-A-T, right? <laughs> we know how challenging our feet are. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, I just have to say, Nancy, I was in Judy's um, first section class today. This is, or yesterday, this is like, what, the fourth time I've done it. And I've heard everybody say exactly how I'm supposed to go into this position and that position. And I think I know it. And I suddenly realized I wasn't angling my hips in one part of it. I, I mean, I couldn't even believe it. It's like, really? After all this time, I yeah. still haven't, it was kind of surprising to me or just that realizing, you know, suddenly thinking, wait a minute, my case is here. Now I know I'm always supposed to be looking at my opponent, but shouldn't I be? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's yeah. bizarre in a way that, you know, somehow you don't pick up every single little thing, you know, that you do here and you think you're practicing. Yeah. Well, you know, that's a personal problem, Marion, because you're the only one you're the only one in this Zoom class that ever has had that issue. Yep. Uh, you know. I'm sure that's true. <laughs> right? So yeah. you know you're in good company. And yeah. um yeah. uh you know, try not to allow it to hurt your feelings by saying, yeah. Well, I, I thought I was doing I I you know I felt a little embarrassed to tell you. Yeah, that. sure, sure. <laughs> I understand that. I understand it. You know, but but that leaves yeah. when when you can be more comfortable in a movement, let's say, then it frees up. Now you don't have to think. Okay, where's my feet going? Okay, where's that foot pointing? Okay, the left arm comes up, right arm comes up. You can do all that. So that frees up now your mind. It has space now for some some information that's already been given to you to now start seeping in and then you go what right <laughs> yeah right I have fun of what moments. yeah so you know we we relish those moments these yeah. light bulb moments when we can really then you know it's like the switch turns on and we go hey you know why wasn't i doing i thought i was doing that before don't let it hurt your feelings just like um, I've had students uh, say to me, uh, you know, I've been doing this, you know, for like eight years and, and, you know, now you make a correction that that was wrong. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're welcome, <laughs> you know, because when it's, when, when you're ready to get it, it presents itself. Not saying that it was never there before, well, because, yeah, I think you know, I right? That, you know? But right, but then today or yesterday, yeah. something clicked, and so so we go like this when we get these moments. Yay, yay, yay! Right? Um, uh, because yeah. I was I was glad that I saw it, but I I did kind of wonder why I didn't like how I hadn't brought it all together. But it's like wow, you know? 
because other things I can see that I have gotten and it's like, how come I, you know? Well, just, if you think of, let's say for instance, ward off left. Okay, if we look at every single movement in the form, there are at least a half a, half a dozen things you have to think about for each specific movement, at least. At least. At least, okay? So, uh, you know, it's it's a lot, Marion. It's it really is a lot, and um, so you know uh, that's one of the things that hooked me to Tai Chi because it was it's never ending. So so I often will say, Tai Chi keeps me very humble because you know there are times when I I say, oh my God, was I really doing that, right? <laughs> You know, um, but you know, when you're ready, it, it, it happens and we just really uh, allow the door to open and the sun to come in and, and then we celebrate that. And then we just wait for the next time because we know that there will be another time. Well, it made Something me realize else. why people say that they keep taking the same classes over. Yeah. Just like, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, because, you know, uh, uh, you will learn something when you repeat something. It's yeah. kind of like watching a movie over and over again. Right. You know, now you're seeing something that's happening over there that you didn't see before. You know, it's just really amazing. Our mind can only hold so much. Right. And now we're at the point where we can start, like, thinking about synchronicity. You know? Yeah, sure. Like, so this last one we learned about intent, mm -hmm. that is a real challenge. Intent rather than force. Don't use coarse strength. Yes, so it's not about using brute force. Uh, uh, the saying that I want you to have in your mind about this essential, it says, use intent rather than force. I want you to translate it as intend not to use force. Yes. That, that's difficult. Mm -hmm. That's okay. difficult for me. Be yeah. Yes, because yeah. in, in, use intent rather than force. Michael and I um, had a, you know, a very challenging time trying to really get this specific essential. And when we were talking with Master Young, and we're talking, I don't know, maybe uh, a few years back, within, let's say, within the past five years or so, we were having a, a conversation with him and, and he just blurted out, you know, intend not to use force. And it was like, ding, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. And so, um, so, so that's how we're thinking now. We have to intend, our intention is not to use force. Our intention is to join with our opponent use, using springy type of energy. And letting their force carry it through. Oh, absolutely. That's yeah, exactly I, what we that's do. The, I think talking about the unification thing i think that's really the key yes to the I, the concepts of using not using bruce force but using intent because i don't know how else you could think of martial arts as something that has an impact on someone else without it being forceful but the energy is coming from the other person in other words yes yes we're not just, using we're just yours you're not intending to hurt them you're just they're intending to hurt you you just let it go but you're redirecting or using it against them or something absolutely absolutely so so in my classes i will say we first need to connect right. you want to connect with your opponent that's the first thing you want to do is connect with them because unless and until you connect with them and, and join with them okay connecting is joining with them right when we can join with them then we can control them I like that, okay? Um, but we first have to join with them. So it's kind of like slipping your hand with another person's hand to do a handshake. It's just very comfortable. It's it's non, uh, it's not aggressive, you know, unless, you know, you're like somebody else who enjoys going like this and, you know, shaking somebody's hand, you know, with a forceful uh, uh, connection. Um, that's not Tai Chi. You know, Tai Chi is, is taking the hot and cold water and, and, and turning the hot water on and noticing it's too hot. So we turn the cold water on a little bit. So they, they join together to make warm, more, warmer water instead of hotter water. OK, 
okay? But but we can turn the faucet full, the cold on full blast, and then, you know, it, it goes like that, but that's not Tai Chi. You know, we slowly turn the pressure on, the water on, until we get that right temperature. So in, so in, when you're doing a move and you, you're, say, a strike, and there's that, that moment of, the moment of the strike making contact, to use intent rather than, I mean, it's still confusing about what that looks like expressed rather than just simply like one arm just sort of slowly, steadily coming out and stopping. You know, that wouldn't be intent. That would just be an arm moving along a plane, right? Okay. Okay. Well, so what about the unifying of soft to hard and the, you know, meeting hard with soft? To me, there there is hardness in there. They're just, it's yes. not, but it's not intentionally hard. It ends up needing to be hard or something. I don't know, needing to be a sorry word. Right. Okay. So, so it's not that we do not use force because we, exactly. we do, right. but we don't use brute force. We are not stiff. We are not hard. We are not, we are soft, but we are not limp. Okay. Wait a sec. Wait a sec. Okay. So <laughs> you're, you can be springy and soft and flexible. And then at the last moment, you're all your, whatever your power is in that isolated contact. Do you consider that that's not brute force? No, no, I don't think it no. is. No, okay, I mean, I, all right. To so, me, every, every form, each form starts oftentimes soft to hard, right? And you're kind of just unifying the soft to hard. Yes, okay. So let's do an exercise together. Let's see how this works, okay? All right, so one of the things that helps me is to be able to feel what it is because, you know, I'm kind of a very kinesthetic person, okay? All right, so so here's here's something that we can do to help you feel it, okay? All right, so I want you to kind of kind of do this. Like you're going to strike something, okay? All right, so now we're doing this kind of softly, right? All right. Now, when we go to actually use it, when we go to use it, it's not going to be this kind of a way. I mean, the motion's going to be the same. But now, when you go to use it, strike, 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 strike. Okay. So you have. Uh, so what I want you to do is, okay, strike, strike strike okay so i want you to use some energy and like punch something punch 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 okay so i want you to use some force is what i'm trying to say punch 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 strike strike okay so so is everybody doing this Yes. Yeah, that's pretty. Okay. All right. I want you to notice when you go to strike, the moment you strike, what does your body do? Bounces back. It bounces back. So that's that's basically kind of unifying soft with hard and hard with soft. That's true. But Nancy, when you're striking you're also striking to someone who's empty at that point. So it's empty and, you know, it's full and empty. So again, you're in the yin yang, you know, Absolutely. circular symbol. So there's actually no, the intent is more psychological, it seems to me, if you're observing empty, you know, yin and yang in that symbol, because when you're connecting, you're no longer just yours, yin and yang but you created another yin and yang oh absolutely you yeah. are so absolutely right we join with our opponent be to become one yes then it, it, it's kind of like you know it becomes one tai chi right one yin and yang and so when we join with them and we take their hard with soft we we connect softly and then from and then we have to turn their hard into soft just asking what he's like me to do so that 
that's when the strike is. Mm -hmm. That's when we can issue energy. That's when we can issue energy when when we can transfer their hard to soft and our soft to hard. <gasps> This takes a lot of practice, all right? But but if you practice punch, 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 we don't just punch and, okay, if you kept on punching, you're going to lose yourself. Right. So we have to, so, so there is this kind of rebound. So we go from soft to hard to soft. Okay. Nancy, is this something like push hands helps you develop? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Push hands gives you the opportunity to work with another person so that you can then join and then see how this yin yang thing works. Mm -hmm. um, it allows us to also uh, work on how to use these energies. How do we use ward off? How do we use roll back? You know, how do we use press and things like that? Okay. Um, so push hands takes it to that next level that does not necessarily mean that you still can't get some of that out of your practice so what you have to, what i want you to kind of think about is <clears throat> is we join to become one and then taking their hard turning it into soft taking our soft turning that into hard okay so like john said this yin yang thing is continually going 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 all the time so the thing to think about is if we look at external martial art and we look at um brute force okay when somebody hits you know and you try to stop with force then it becomes who's stronger who's faster you know who's more powerful in tai chi the, the, that doesn't matter in Tai Chi, it, 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 it matters on how you're able to adapt yin and yang in your, in your specific situation. And that's not only just for Tai Chi. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so if our intention is not to use brute force, our intention is to join and then from, we can say from storing energy, then we can release energy. Are you guys? That's really oh. interesting. I'm just trying to figure out, um, like, how I can express it in my in my practice so that it, you know, it all makes sense. Like to say to somebody else, you know, like, would they? I don't know if that matters, but would I feel it? Does it really? What is what really all that matters is how we feel as we're doing it, not worry about oh. whether it's observable to somebody else. Is that what we should be focusing on? Um, tai Chi will boil down to how does it feel inside your body? Okay. All right. Okay. So what we can say to students is, you know, from here, you know, we're storing and then we're releasing. Yeah. Okay. We connect softly. We issue energy. Okay. So from storage to release. That makes sense. Okay, good. That helps. So, so, so the thing to remember, or one of the other things to remember, is that the kind of energy that we want is a springy type of energy, like the slinky. Or, or remember we talked about, you know, jello. I like that. Yeah. So the key to this specific essential is is unifying energy. It's good. I've seen everybody writing. This sounds like this is going to be a really big part of like, I don't know, working with Tai Chi, of, of making it feel like Tai Chi. Yes. So so the thing that that. Uh, OK, so these essentials work with your mind and with energy. So remember that the first thing that needs to happen is that your mind, our mind has to understand what this essential is asking us to do. Okay. If your mind does not understand it, 
then your mind cannot direct your body to do what it needs to do. Of course. Right? So it's important that you understand that this essential is about uh, uh, no forgets. It, it's about balancing energy between soft and hard uh, without being limp or, or, or hard. Um, it's about not using brute force. It's about having springy energy and it's about, uh, you know, unifying energy. So if you can go through the form and say, okay, where am I storing? Where am I releasing? We know when we go to do something, that's a release. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So we are storing to release energy. And we're get, we're, we're basically taking that, that person's energy and using it. Yes. Really that doesn't mean that we're not energy. using our own energy because we are using yeah. some energy. But yeah. we like to borrow. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like, you know, going into the library you open the door and there are all these books that we can borrow so we borrow one at a time right so you know uh the same thing with with tai chi we we like to borrow our opponent's energy if so you want to come forward i'll let you come forward it's okay so theoretically if someone say was a strong powerful person and they had a lot of weight behind their punch at you or whatever their swing and you grabbed that energy and its velocity velocity and then added your own and turned it back against them you would have much more to deliver to them um they will put themselves out of balance yeah we just help them right so so if if they want to direct energy towards us we just need to follow we connect we follow and we just make them go a different direction that's all and we'll get to that in in you know one of the other essentials coming up um but um yes so we like to uh follow our opponents we like to connect with our opponents and follow what it is that they are trying to do if they want to come forward come on so you know it's um uh that's why tai chi doesn't require you to be a certain height, a certain weight, you know, mm -hmm. male or female, doesn't matter. It's how are you able to unify your energy to join with another person and connect with them and follow with them and have them not hurt you. Nancy, so, is, it, is it possible for you to demonstrate kind of what intent would look like on a move that, that would be visual for us to see okay all right so here's here's one that uh some people have trouble with parry block and punch now if you're a person that doesn't go around or hasn't gone around punching people when you when when people get to parry block and punch to learn that movement some people go oh my gosh now i get to punch somebody okay all right so i'm going here parry block oh i get to punch somebody i get to punch somebody and they start to get really tight and really stiff and then they go punch <sighs> okay that's not tai chi that's not tai chi because our intention is not to use brute force so we come from soft to become hard, to become soft, to become hard, okay? So when we do parry block and punch, here's the block, and then here's punch, punch, punch. But we know when we go to use punch, okay, then then we're able to take, we're, we're, we're able to have our body then interpret follow connect follow then go ahead and issue your energy okay so so we're not um it in, in some other martial arts 
they're they they may think you know you got to block this the you know somebody's trying to hit you you need to block it you know that's force that's brute strength you need to block it okay um we don't have to do that so uh, come here for a second michael brush knee and push that's a good one so so you know there's different things that we can do like if michael came to kick to me okay he came to kick to me all right so you know i can i can uh, go ahead i can stop him okay i can stop him but in a knee brush when he comes to lift his leg go ahead no you do a kick i'm sorry kick no don't, don't grab my knee okay okay so you know we go like this that's all it needs but it's about timing right yeah but, but even if he got to the point where his leg was out okay leg was out okay i can still brush knee okay so you don't have to use force against force you, i want you to think how can i connect with this person how can i connect with them initially then after connecting with them now there's a, 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 a you know a hundred different things that i can do to issue energy you know i had uh in our school a long long time ago there were these younger guys taking class so i was walking into the classroom and somebody i just felt something coming up so i went like this and it was a it was a leg so i went like this oh my god and I went like this. Now I didn't let go, which meant that the person did not fall. Because I could have gone like this and let him go. But I just scooped up and they just went back and went, oh, oh, oh. And, I, and so I, I you know, let, let them down and, and I said, what was that? And they said, well, I was just playing around. I was trying to kick you. And I said, don't try to kick me. <laughs> don't do that. I guess not. Okay. So I didn't use any force. I connected first. Once I connected and noticed, oh, this is cut. Okay, <laughs> I'll go up. And they couldn't kick me anymore. So, so if there's anything that you take away from this class, is you must first connect softly. Okay, first connect with your opponent. From that point, then, after you connect, then you can release. Or after you've stored, now you can release. Did that make any sense, Cindy? Did that help you? Yes. Okay. Would you call storing the following part? Because I think you said connect, follow, then deliver energy. Would you call? Would you consider follow sort of like the gathering or the storing of the energy part? Yes. Okay. So Nancy, when we're releasing our energy, do we still like want to keep our shape and our you know, in the our form shape? we do. But when you're yeah. when you're in a free form fight, your form your form may not even look like the right. form. Yeah. Okay. But yes, when we're in the form, absolutely. Yes. It should yeah. not d d uh, uh, take away from your body shape. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, anybody else have any questions or, or comments about these? All right, so we're gonna go on then. The next uh, essential we're gonna work on is called matching up inner and outer. Now we worked a little bit on this one already. So you guys will have an easier time with this. All right, so match up inner and outer. When we are practicing in, in Tai Chi, no. What we are practicing in Tai Chi depends on the spirit, hence the saying, the spirit is the general, the body, his troops. If you can raise your spirit, your movements will naturally be light and nimble. The form, nothing more than empty and full, open and closed. When we say open, we, ju we don't just mean open the arms or legs. The mental intent must open along with the limbs. When we say close, we don't just mean close the arms or legs. The mental intent must close along with the limbs. Oh boy. 
way. If you can combine inner and outer into a single impulse, then you, then then they become a seamless whole. Whoa. Yeah, this one's kind of a, a lot. Okay, so so what does it mean to match up inner and outer? It means to combine internal and external. It means that the mind and body work together towards one goal. All right, so here's an example. You want to open the door. Think about pushing the door. Stay. How can you open the door if, 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 if you want to open the door, but you push the door closed, how can you open the door? The mind, it, it, you know, it has to come with the mind. So the mind then uh, directs the body on what it needs to do, and the body and the mind work as one towards that one goal. I'm going to open the door. That means I got to reach for the handle, turn the handle, pull, right? Which is opposite of push. So as long as your mind and your body are working together as one, then that's a good thing. So it's about coordinating internal and external. It's about combining your mind, your chi, and your spirit. So do you, are you saying it's simply that uh, when you think of what you're doing, that's what you should be doing at that time? Like if you say you want to push, you should be thinking I'm going to be pushing. Yes. Okay. Yes. So so we want to use our mind, our chi, and our spirit in our movements. Okay. All right. Uh, unmute me. Okay. So how do we get the internal mind, chi, and spirit to coordinate with the external? That's the big question. We talked about this at the last class. We talked about. Okay, so, so how do you get the internal, your mind, your chi, and your spirit to coordinate with your external body movements? How is that done? What do you have to do? Practice. Oh, that's a great one. Yes, of course. Of course. It boils down to one one word. I mean. That's a good word. And I'm sorry? One she intent. Okay, that's another good word. Intent. Chi. All right. I'm looking for one other word. Connect. How do you make sure your internal and external are working together? That word I'm looking for is synchronize. Well, that's a good a good word. Is we must coordinate the movements with our breath, mind, with our breath, with, our breath. with breathing. Breath. <clears throat> yes, it was like an E.F. Hutton moment right there. I don't know. Did anybody ever see that that commercial when E.F. Hutton talks? People listen. Yeah. Everything goes silent, right? Okay. So we coordinate our, our mind, our chi, and our spirit with our breathing. So that means then that to combine the internal and external, we have to combine our footwork, our body work, and hand techniques together, that's the external part, with our chi or our breathing. So if, for instance, you go to punch, you guys will remember this. Okay, everybody stand up. Okay, if you want, you can you can you know, do this practical uh, exercise. Okay, so get in a, a position where you're gonna punch something. Okay, you wanna get in a position where you're ready to punch something, okay? All right, you ready? When you go to punch, breathe in, go. Breathe in. As you punch out, when you try to punch, breathe in. How's that working? No. No, right? Okay, so try it again, and this time, breathe out when you want to punch. 
natural to breathe out when you punch. Right? Okay. That's how we match up inner and outer. It also feels natural to hold my breath when I'm punching. Well, yes, that's <laughs> that. And you don't want to do that, Marianne, because <laughs> then uh, you're stuck. Okay. Yeah, you're going to be like stuck. All right. So we don't want that. So, so what we want to try to do is uh, if we look at grasping the bird's tail. Okay. So from here, you know, we go, you know, we breathe in, we breathe out. We know when we issue energy, we breathe out. We breathe in, we breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. So I want you to think about this when you are practicing your form this week. Okay? When you go to use the energy, whatever energy that is, wild horse parts its mane. Okay? Are you breathing out? Now, let's talk about Marion a little bit here. <laughs> <clears throat> that does not mean... <clears throat> okay, I'll, I'll do this. Breathe in. Oh, oh. Uh, it's a long breathing in. Uh, okay, breathe out. <sighs> okay. Don't hold your breath. All right, if you need to breathe in and out during that time, that's fine. But know that when it's time for you to then use it, you need to breathe out, okay? So let's try this together and see if we're able to do this. And we're only gonna go from uh, uh, beginning to push uh, and we'll see how that works, okay? All right, so from here, almost at the bottom. We go to ward off left, shifting, turning. Okay, we're storing. Okay, you can breathe in. Okay, and then from here, breathe out. Breathe in. And if you need to keep breathing, that's okay. But we know once our arms close and we go to ward off right, we, we're breathing out. Breathe in. For roll back, breathe out as you turn. Breathe in. Press out, breathe out. Push, breathing in as we store our energy and breathe out as we release it, okay? This makes sense, right? You yeah. can kind of understand this in grasping the bird's tail. All right, so now we have, let's say, a big movement. Let's say a bigger movement. Single whip. So, how would you breathe in and breathe out for this, all right? So from here, we breathe in. We breathe out, because why? I need to throw somebody. I breathe in. I need to hit somebody, strike somebody. Breathe out. Then, breathing in, breathing out, okay? So you can take it and, and think about, you have to think about what am I doing in this specific movement? Am I issuing any energy? If you are, then you know you have to breathe out at that point. You, you know, where's the time when you store your energy? Is usually when we are making our circles. Then we are storing our energy. Then we release our energy. So we have movements like this. White crane spreads its wings. We know this is the breathing out part. All right, so um, we know that from here, this pull down, we need to breathe out a little bit because we are using our energy to pull somebody down. All right, so this is going to make you a little bit more. Oh, go ahead, Shelly. So um, the whole idea of, I mean, you're breathing in basically when you're doing soft and breathing out when you're doing hard. Yes. So it kind of connects to the using intent rather than force too. Yes. 
these are all like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah they all go together. Absolutely. Um, so, so this is going to help you become a little bit more mindful of what it is that you're doing at any specific time in a transition, in a movement, um, to recognize what is it that you're doing here. How am I coordinating my inside with my outside? We know that has to do with breathing. It has to do with what is it, what's our intent here, okay? What, what is uh, uh, my mind and my body trying to do together as one? Uh, and so remember it's about combining our mind, our chi, our body, and our spirit. So we know chi has to do with breathing, right? Breathing, breathing, breathing. So they all work towards one goal. And that is, you know, that when we strike, that we strike to a point, you know, uh, that it is fulfilling that one goal. Punch. Or roll back. Or whatever. But we are using our mind and using our breathing to work together. Yes. Go ahead, Shelly. Well, so I... You know, oftentimes, once you learn the form and you've done, you know, section one, eight times of classes and, you know, whatever, you get to the point where it's almost muscle memory. Yes. But at the same time, it sounds like what I'm hearing from you is we shouldn't be using muscle memory. We should be consciously thinking about that movement as we're doing it. Your muscle memory will help your body, your mind will help your body to remember what it needs to do next in the form. Uh, this, what I was going to uh, suggest to you guys, uh, has a little bit more to do with single movement practice. Take a movement. You can even take push. Okay. Take a, take a movement and practice that. Just that movement. And see, are you matching inside with outside? Are you pushing and breathing in? That won't work. Okay, so, so this is about using our energy. When we have to use our energy, that they have to work together. Okay, inside and outside has to work together. Just like when we're driving our car. Uh, we get to the point where we don't have to uh, think as much as we did when we were first learning how to drive a car because now we're fiddling with the stations now you know we're looking at the directions on our GPS uh, you know uh, we know we're passing the streets that we're familiar with we're not even looking at the signs anymore and we know that you know the uh, we're doing the gas and the brake gas and brake and while steering okay and putting makeup on okay so so it's working together towards one thing so so our mind when we are are comfortable more comfortable with uh, a movement you know or sections then it frees our mind up because now we don't have to okay what comes next what comes next oh okay now what stance am i going to go into oh, okay was this an empty stance oh am i in a good empty stance i don't know is my arm position okay you get beyond that mm -hmm. so there's these stages that we go through in tai chi and the first one is you have to learn how to do the gross movements. Then you memorize the sequence. That in itself is a big undertaking. It took me a long time to memorize the sequence. So, um, so remember that um, what we want to try to do here is uh, use single movement practice to get to the point where we can uh, coordinate internal and external together okay with our breathing um, towards one goal and that's whatever the energy is is it push energy is it ward off energy split energy what is it okay so let's go through the first section together and I want you to just kind of be mindful of when are you storing your energy or breathing in and when are you using your energy uh, to release, okay? Um, so let's practice. 
All right, ready? Prepare. Opening. We breathe in and breathe out. Go to ward off left. So we know that as we are storing our energy, we breathe in. When we release, we breathe out. And, and know that, that, you know, try not to hold your breath at any time. And know that when we're doing single movement practice, this will be a little bit more pronounced, our breathing. Press. And push. Single whip, breathing in. Turn, breathe out. Arms come back, we breathe in. Striking to the corner, breathing out. Stepping, breathing in. Striking, breathe out. Raise hands, back and turn. Breathing in, stepping, breathing out. White crane, breathing in. Step, and we can breathe out. Know that there are going to be different stages depending upon what it is you're doing in your single movement practice. Okay, so we breathe out when we strike. Hands. In. Breathe out. Left knee brush. Striking is breathing out. Right knee brush. Breathing out when we strike. Left knee brush. Hand strums the loop. Breathing in and then breathe out when you release your energy. Left knee brush. Striking when you breathe out. Parry block and punch. Remember when you go to punch, that's when we breathe out. Apparent closing up. Breathing in and breathe out. Cross hands, breathe in, chop, breathe out. Circle down, breathing in, double ward off up. Closing and breathe out. Now, <clears throat> a word to the wise. It's a little challenging to do it when you're doing the form. So that's why Master Yang recommends don't worry too much about how you're breathing during the form. Okay? Just make sure you're breathing. <laughs> uh, if you, you know, want to take it to the next step, make sure you're breathing out when you're issuing your energy. Okay? This is more geared towards single movement practice and when we're doing push hands. Uh, because we know that when we issue energy, when we're trying to move somebody, that we need to breathe out when we go to do that, okay? So um, kind of pay attention to what it is that you're doing. Are you, are you breathing during the form and not holding your breath, okay? Because that wouldn't be good. It's a long form, it takes you 20 minutes. If you can hold your breath for 20 minutes and let, you know, call me, okay? Um, <laughs> So, um, anybody have any questions? Uh, All right. So this essential, go ahead. But Does somebody I mean, have something? I was just going to say no? it, it feels a little, um, trying to do it along the way. It's, it, yeah, I feel like I'm forcing myself to breathe. So yeah, the single movement. Might yes. So when you're practicing, the, when yeah. you're practicing the form, just breathe natural. Okay, when you're doing single movement practice is a time when you can really use your breathing to coordinate, okay, your storage and release. And this is also about okay. training your mind when you practice your breathing, isn't it? Sure. I mean, that's what it feels like. Yes. You know, okay. Yes. Yes, because remember, everything starts and ends with, the, with our mind. 
Our mind tells us, okay, you want to do this? Okay, body, then this is what you need to do. Right. All right. So, um, so yes. So we're working towards one goal, and that's either to open and close the door. How are you doing that? How are you using your breathing to help you accomplish that? Um, okay, so um, uh, remember when you're practicing the form, just kind of try to breathe natural. If you want to get to the, you know, uh, to think, you know, when you're doing ward off, that when you go to use it, you breathe out, you can coordinate your breath with that. But remember, this is more towards um, single movement practice, okay? Anybody have any questions? You guys are doing fabulous, by the way, okay? Um, uh, let's see, Michael and I have been doing Tai Chi since 1996. Um, and our first teacher really didn't teach us very much about the essentials. Um, he wrote down these 10 things for us to remember, but we didn't know they were the essentials. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, it wasn't until we got with Master Yang in the year 2000 that um, we started learning about this. Um, and um, uh, so um, uh, you guys are, are, are doing great and, you know, uh, keep up the good work. Okay. All right. Any questions? Rebecca, what did you say? It was with a good hand. Oh. <laughs> no, no, well, thank you very much for that. I do want to make one comment. This class has sort of um, re-energized my enthusiasm in a way for Tai Chi because it brings it back into the more emotionally and spiritually satisfying aspect than always working on postures and drills. Mm -hmm. so it's kind of, it's kind of sure. Fun, yeah, it's kind of like you know you have children. You know, it's it it's. I don't want to say it's easy. You know, having children is one thing, raising them is another, right? Yeah. So, so this is, you know, we're, get, we're getting raised on these essential. And uh, yeah, so that's good that it's re-energized you. Um, you know, learning, learning new things about Tai Chi uh, can, can totally do that. Yeah. Can have that effect. So that's good. Okay. Anything else? All right. So. Everybody go forth and match up your inside and your outside. <laughs> okay. And, and I'll see you guys at class next week. Okay. Thanks, man. Thank see you, Nancy. All right. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Nancy. Thank you, Nancy. Oh, you're Bye. welcome, Miss Esther. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. How you doing, Dee Dee? Okay. I, I'm, I'm doing fine. I, I had to get on really quick and get the, um, get my second dose scheduled that's why i was late to class oh and where'd you get it scheduled uh monroe yeah the fairgrounds, uh, the fairgrounds. yeah that's right. where i got the first one so got the email and then so john and i have it at separate times but um but we both got scheduled in the next uh by the end of the week we'll both have it oh, right on yeah so and i was due today or today tomorrow or the next day and it's the next day i'm getting it so i mean those